Now, let's talk about what a steering committee is. By definition, a steering committee is a group of people, usually managers, that is formed with the objective of supervising and supporting a project at the management level. A steering committee members are selected based on their involvement in the project. In other words, a steering committee should represent the main stakeholders of the project. Example, the customer, the project manager, the supplier of goods or services, as well as the different managers of the different departments most involved in the project are examples of um, uh, steering committee members. So those who sit on the steering committee do not usually work directly on the day-to-day -day activities of the project. It is the project manager with his project team members who are responsible for implementing the project. And often, uh, steering committees also include executive managers such as the CEOs and CFOs because, as you know, projects are closely linked to a company's strategy um, and projects cost a lot of money. So that's the reason why executive managers have a vested interest in making sure that the money invested in a project is well spent. So now, why should we have a steering committee in a project? So the job of the steering committee is to steer a project in the right direction. Why is it necessary? Because projects often have to make decisions about how the company should manage its processes and how project teams should work together. So all of these decisions cannot be made by the project team members alone. And in addition, a steering committee can help solve problems quickly. This refers to cases where the project team has tried everything to solve a problem that has not succeeded. Now the steering committee can then use it, its management strength to solve problems and issues and resolve conflicts quickly. All this for the good of the project. So is it compulsory to set up a steering committee in a project? So the answer is absolutely yes. It is imperative to set up a steering committee. Even if you are very optimistic about the project or if you have already conducted a very similar project before, a steering committee is really, really important. So you have to look at the steering committee just like an insurance. You just know that you need your insurance when you get in trouble and you need someone, in our example here is the steering committee, to get you out of that trouble. So in fact, a steering committee is so important that it should be a priority, the first thing that you have to put in place before starting a new project. Let's talk about the roles and responsibilities of the steering committee. Responsibility number one, supporting the project. If you have ever led a project, you certainly know how difficult it is to get support from your management team. And projects mean extra work, a lot of pressure and change. So nobody wants that. Nobody wants extra work. Nobody wants a lot of pre pressure. No, You know, most of people do not want change, especially when things are going well for them. So the amount of resistance project managers have to overcome is huge and enormous. And this is exactly where the steering committee comes in. As managers of the contributing departments on the project, the steering committee members can push their team to work harder and create a sense of urgency or emergency in the minds of their teams for the good of the project and for the project to progress in the right direction. Responsibility number two, making decisions. So some decisions are too important to be made by the project manager and his team members alone. For example, decisions about new business models or decisions about how business processes should be managed flexible hours. You know, there are certain questions, certain decisions, very important decisions that need to be made in the organization that the project manager cannot make them alone. So all these major decisions must be made by the steering committee. Responsibility number three, that is going to be solving problems. The steering committee also helps solve problems quickly, especially in cases where the project team has tried everything to solve a problem but without success, as I talked to you about uh, in a couple of seconds. The committee can use its management strength to resolve or settle these conflicts very quickly. So as a project manager, you should not hesitate to approach the members of the steering committee when you need help in resolving any kind of problem during negotiations, for example, or in deciding on the way forward. So that's what the steering committee is there for. The responsibility number four is going to be approving the project budget. So needless to say, the steering committee must approve the initial project budget. They must also 
approve requests for additional budget in case you know you need it in a project because sometimes you would have to negotiate with the steering committee to have an extra budget to complete the project so responsibility five that is going to be receiving updates on project progress so often in some companies every four or six weeks the project manager will stand in front of the steering committee to give an update on the progress of the project as this is important for the steering committee because it helps guide them in their decision making so as i said their job is also to make decisions so they make decisions based on some information that you would give them about the progress of the project so that's it for responsibility number five let's now talk about responsibility number six that is going to be encouraging project manager encouraging the project manager Yes, project managers also need occasional encouragement. The job as a project manager is hard and very few people understand what it entails. So the best place to vent and talk about the difficulties encountered during the project is in front of the steering committee. So in reality, the steering committee can also act as an advocate for projects throughout the company. They can set the strategic direction for the various projects that the company is running. Um, they also give advice on budgeting, human resources management, scheduling, hiring, and marketing. In short, all project-related activities, you know, the steering committee can give you as a project manager some advice that would help you uh, run your project smoothly. Uh, the steering committee can also establish project objectives, scope, and determine how success will be measured in a project, you know, things like that. That they can also intervene in the evaluation and approval or rejection of project plans and changes to project plans. So all of these changes must be um, evaluated and approved or sometimes even rejected by the steering committee. One other thing that the, pro the steering committee can do is to prioritize project deliverables based on the project the progress of the project they monitor project processes and plans they resolve conflicts between stakeholders as i talked to you about and they can also you know propose or advice on what kind of strategies that you should put in place or what kind of problem solving techniques ideas you should have as a project manager in order to let your project move forward. They provide expert input on project or company-wide concerns and issues. Um, the steering community develop governance policies as well and procedures. They can be really instrumental into identifying and monitoring and eliminating and eliminating project and business risk. They also monitor project quality and adjust accordingly. So that's it about the roles and activities and responsibilities of the steering committee. So now let's talk about how often should the steering committee meet. So the frequency of the steering committee meetings will essentially depend on the type and the complexity of the project you are working on. But generally, it is recommended to have a steering committee meeting every six to eight weeks. The minimum you can do is to have a steering committee meeting after each phase of the project. That means after the project initiating phase, after the planning phase, after the execution phase, and then finally after the closing phase that will be the last steering committee meeting. So that's the minimum you can do. But as I said, it is recommended to have this steering committee meeting like every six or sometimes even some companies make it every four weeks okay so what is important to note here is that if the project team is facing an urgent problem you as a project manager should not wait for the next steering committee meeting before addressing the issue but instead you can always contact the steering committee members by email or you can schedule an immediate meeting to deal with that particular problem so the the same applies to urgent decisions meeting you know meetings where you know the steering committee would have to make a decision all right so now let's talk about how you should prepare for a steering committee meeting so let's just say that for a steering committee meeting the main thing you need to prepare is a set of slides containing the various points you would want to discuss with the members during the meeting for example your presentation should contain a slide outlining the project progress for example uh, so this slide is going to explain where you are in the project schedule you can have another slide that will talk about the cost update uh, on that slide you will show the evolution of the project costs you will show the difference between the planned cost and the actual cost being absorbed in the project uh, you can talk about the major project accomplishments this is where you can show how great you are 
that the project is moving forward and that the various deliverables are being produced. And uh, another slide that was going to be, uh, you know, what are the works in progress as well as what are the next steps. So on that particular slide, you will show what are the tasks that are in progress, but also what are the next steps of the project. So in order to give an idea on where the project is heading, and uh, you may also want to include deadlines on that particular slide, as well as the people responsible for the different tasks being completed. And then you can also have a slide on key issues and risks. Every project has issues and risks that occur, you know, that you can control, but they may occur or may not. You should talk about these issues and risks to the steering committee members. And on that particular slide, you will discuss these issues and risks that are likely to prevent the project from moving in the right direction. So the goal here during the steering committee meeting is going to be to use the same agenda structure for each meeting okay you can have all these uh, slides you will use them for every meeting because using the same agenda structure in each meeting makes it easier for participants to follow you can also create additional slides for topics that require more detailed explanations for example you might add a slide that includes a detailed cost structure for the project and if the steering committee asks for more details on the cost you simply skip to the that uh, uh, slide in question. Okay, so that's how you prepare for a normal steering committee meeting. Then let's talk about how you should prepare for a steering committee meeting that requires a decision from the steering committee members. So as a project manager, when you want the steering committee to make a decision during a meeting, additional preparation is on your part is necessary. For example, you may ask the steering committee for a budget increase, uh, like $20,000, for example, uh, to implement a different but better solution that, than the one originally planned. In such a case, you will need to prepare a slide, for example, outlining what will the additional budget be used for, what are perhaps the advantages, disadvantages of taking the, the more expensive option, what are the implications for the project. And here, my advice would be to also include some visuals such as graphics or infographics to make your, your point. And once you have the slides ready, you can send these slides to the steering committee members at least one week before the next meeting. And uh, sending these slides in advance will give the committee members time to review the topic. They can have internal discussions and prepare for the decision. So you cannot expect the committee members to make a, an immediate decision without having sufficient time. So that's why you have to send the slides in advance for them to have a, an idea of what they're going to be discussing during the, the meeting that day. So in general, it is not necessary to distribute your slides before a meeting. If it is a normal meeting, it's not necessary. But it is often recommended that you do so only if a decision is to be made during the meeting. Okay, so that's it for how you should prepare for a steering committee meeting, be it a normal meeting or a meeting where a decision has to be made by the committee members. Now let's talk about what happens at a steering committee meeting. At a steering committee meeting, someone will be needed to lead a meeting. This is usually done by the project manager because you are going to be the one uh, presenting how the project is progressing. And as a project leader, you will also begin by welcoming everyone to the meeting. If there are guests at the meeting, uh, you will let them say a few words to introduce themselves so that everyone would get to know them. Next, the project manager will go through the slides presenting the project plan, project status. Uh, you, you will give some updates about the cost of the project, the major accomplishments, you know, works that are in progress and the next steps of the project and finally talk about the issues and the risks. Then after doing that, the project manager will not be the only one speaking during the meeting so once he has finished presenting the various slides that he has prepared you know some other committee members attending the meeting will also want to speak and say a few things or give some information so the project manager should also be prepared for possible questions following uh, their presentations such as uh, you know questions about human resources uh, uh, like have you talked to the hr or if he's, he talked about an issue for example you know people would definitely want to ask questions on how to to deal and get the the answer from the project manager and so as a project manager whatever your answer to the questions from the committee members, you have to do it concisely, precisely, and uh, with a few words. Then you should only continue your presentation when you have made sure that the point has been clarified and everybody has, you know, has a clear idea of the issue of your answer. 
In cases where there's a decision to be made, it is important to say a few words on the subject and the committee members will render their verdict as to what decision should be maintained. Now, let's talk about the minutes of the meeting during a steering committee meeting. So let's just say that during the steering committee meeting, it is important to take minutes. Everything that is discussed and decided should be recorded in these minutes in order to keep track of the decisions made and the topics discussed during the meeting. So these minutes can be used as a reference throughout the project. People can come back to decisions and, you know, they can trace the date and, you know, the meeting where the decision was made. So the project manager will likely be busy conducting the meeting. Therefore, he can ask someone else to take the minutes. This will most often be given to maybe the project assistant or some other member of the steering committee would uh, gladly take that responsibility of you know jotting down the decisions and every topic being discussed during the meeting so once the meeting is over the project manager can close the meeting by thanking everyone for their participation then he can share the minutes of the meeting with the various meeting participants now let's talk about the do's and don'ts of running a steering committee meeting sometimes steering committee meetings don't go as planned but with time and experience as a project manager you will get used to it and enjoy presenting your projects to the steering committee members while avoiding pitfalls I'm about to tell you right now. So here are some things to consider for a successful steering committee meeting. The first element is going to be that you should take enough time to prepare for the meeting. The reality is that creating compelling, you know, and attractive slides takes a lot of time. And the content of the slide often needs to be reconciled with the other parts of the presentation, which also take time. So you should take your time to make sure that your presentation and your slides are very catchy and is going to present the necessary information to the steering committee members. The second element that you should consider is that the steering committee members are only concerned about two things, project progress and project cost. They want answers to the following questions. Are we still on budget? And is the project moving in the right direction? They do not care how many hours you worked last night. They don't even care how much fun you had at your last team building event. So during the steering committee meeting, you should focus on what is relevant to the steering committee members. And you should always ask yourself that question. Why would the steering committee care? Okay, so all these information that you would put in your slide should answer positively to that question. Why would the steering committee members care about this particular information that I'm putting on my presentation? So that's it for the point number two. Point number three you should consider is that the other thing to consider would be honesty and uh, accuracy. You should be honest and accurate. So you are free as a project manager to choose how you present an issue, but always be honest and accurate. You should never hide the facts because, you know, facts will always come out sooner or later anyway, and the steering committee would find out. So you should always be transparent. This includes you know, transparent about your own failures, you know, things that you did not uh, solve well or you did not deal with very well. So if there is something you know you could have done better, you have to be open about it because the last thing that you would want to have is that you never want to lose the trust of the steering committee. Okay, so always be transparent and always recognize your mistakes, your failures, and always be accurate and honest about how the project is progressing. And a few other things that you should consider that would be um, that you have to also pay attention to small details. For example, the scheduling steering committee meetings in advance. So you should schedule the meetings in advance. You should reserve an appropriate size room. You should check the connection to the video projectors and computers. You should familiarize yourself with the telephone or, you know, the various tools uh, so that you know how to set up conference calls and all of that. And finally, you should make sure that outside guests, external guests, know how to access the conference room if, you know, the, the, the meeting is done uh, indoors in, a, in an office or in a certain place. So these are some of the do's and don'ts or the elements that you need to consider during a steering committee meeting.